everybody and welcome to day two of my 12 days of Christmas ornaments series. Today we are going to be making this super super cute felt embellished frame and this is my friend Sarah's daughter Alexis. Isn't she adorable? Um, she's so cute and I love this project. I um because I wanted to use these mittens, I made it a little bit bigger. So the finished size of the frame is approximately 4 by 6 and the picture um, is a little bit bigger than 4 by 2 You could absolutely make this smaller. You could use a wallet size photo. Um, I just, my embellishments were a little bit larger so I had to scale up the size of the whole project. I would still totally hang this on my Christmas tree or you could hang it on the wall or whatever um, else you wanted to do with it. But you could absolutely make this smaller. Um, for a smaller photo and then it would be more of an ornament um, size or you could also do this um, with like a photo and then t um, tie it onto a, a present, tie it onto a package so it would be like the gift tag um, but it would be a photo of the gift recipient I think that would be super cute and then they could hang it on their Christmas tree so I'm gonna walk you through this whole project and um, let's get started I'm using some of Amuse Studio's new felt today and to, just to save time I have pre-cut most of my pieces. This is the sky felt and I have two pieces here that are uh, four by six inches and the cool thing about this felt is it's really sturdy and it's really a nice tight weave. So if you have a, a guillotine style paper trimmer um, meaning the one with the arm that comes up and down rather than the blade that you slide this way. Um, you can actually put this in your paper trimmer and cut it that way. Um, and you can get it all really square and be absolutely certain that they come out the same and you don't have to worry about tracing patterns or getting cutting straight lines or anything like that. And then I have used the smaller of the two uh, mitten dies that are in the new holiday catalog and also the smallest snowflake from the snowflake trio dies that are also in the holiday catalog. And um, when you get these dies, they're actually all three of them are um, together kind of like in a triangle and I just took them and sort of twisted them um, to take them apart and then you want to there's going to be little nubs and you want to kind of sand those down a little bit so I cut um, the mittens out of grass and the um, snowflakes out of the sugar or ivory it might be called I'm not sure um, so I cut two of each of those okay and I'm going to be using this um, three in one uh, advanced craft glue so I'm just going to squeeze out a very small amount onto all of the arms of the snowflake. And I'm just going to kind of center it on the mitten. And stick it down. And now I have some of these um, self-adhesive rhinestones from Amuse. And I'm going to take two of these large circle ones here. And these are all connected. Um, so I'm just going to take my scissors and snip two of them off. And then I'm just going to take one and put it in the center. Oops. Of each of these snowflakes here. Now I want to show you how I make the cutout for the front of the frame. Um, I'm using this huge quilting ruler. Uh, it's it's like a 22 inch 20 no it's 24 inch ruler actually um, just because this is all I had that has these um, lines going crossways on the ruler that make it really easy so you can keep everything square and you don't have to measure more than once uh, but I know Tim Holtz does make a smaller ruler like this and I think Stampin Up made one too um, you just want to make it easier for yourself you want the one a ruler that has the lines going this way um, that are marked off. So I, and I just have a marker and I'm going to line up the three quarters of an inch right here. <clears throat> that line, I'm going to line up with the base of my felt piece. And I'm going to try to do this without getting my head in the camera. Okay, that's all lined up. And then I'm just going to take the small end of my marker here and just draw a really light line all the way across 
and I'm going to do that on all four sides. Okay, I have all my lines drawn, and um, you can see I just used a blue marker, and I drew light lines, and you can't even see it on the other side of the felt. This stuff is really awesome. And um, you just want, <clears throat> whoops, uh, <laughs> just want a pair of good, sharp scissors. Um, you probably, if you have um, just fabric scissors or ribbon scissors, you probably want to use those. I can't find my fabric scissors right now, so I'm just going to use my normal um, little paper scissors here. And I'm just going to cut into it, cut up to my first line, and I'm just going to go ahead and cut around um, on my lines here. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, you just do the best that you can. And just go ahead and cut all the way around the inside of your frame. Okay, and there's my frame all cut out. <clears throat> and here's my back piece, the other piece of 4x6 felt. And they're just going to go together just like that. And now I'm going to take my picture, and I have this cut a little bit bigger than the opening. The opening is about um, 2 and a half by 4 and a half in this case. And my picture is cut just a little bit bigger than that. Um, so that when I lay this on here, there's enough of an edge here, and I'm actually going to sew around the inside edge and around the outside edge. But I kind of want to get everything sort of sandwiched together first so that when I take it to my sewing machine, um, it'll all be where I want it to be. So, so I'm actually going to use a little bit of just my regular snail adhesive, and I'm just going to put this on the back of the picture. But I don't want to get too close to the edge because I am going to be sewing. Um, on the, the picture um, onto the felt um, as well. So I'm just going to center this on the back of my frame and just kind of give it a, a stick here. And I'm going to take the back of my frame. Sorry about the glare on my picture here. Um, I'm going to take my frame. Whoops. and take my glue and I'm just going to put a little bit in the center. Again, you don't want to be putting glue where you're going to be sewing. So I'm really focusing on the center of the outside of my frame here and I'm not putting too much down so it doesn't squoosh out um, onto where I'm going to be sewing because you don't want your sewing machine needle to sew through adhesive. So. Now I'm just going to really carefully line this up, whoops, uh, making sure that everything is as square as possible. I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm just going to use very basic white thread and I'm just going to sew a straight, in, a straight stitch around the outside of the frame and around the inside of the frame. Now I'm all finished with my sewing and um, I had a little bit of a change of plans. You can see I actually sewed uh, three um, rows around the outside of this frame. I'm going to bring my mittens back in and I'm just going to kind of think about where I want the two of them to be. So I'll just put a little good kind of line of glue. where my mitten is going to go. Mm, kind of right about there. Stick that down real well and then I'll do the same thing over in the corner over here. So now it's time to make the string that's going to be connecting our two mittens. And so I just have here a pretty long length of brown and white baker's twine, and this is going to be the string between the mittens. And then I have um, a cup here, and this is just watered-down Elmer's glue. And this is going to get kind of messy, so I've got a baby wipe handy here on my desk. And <clears throat> all I need to do is I'm just going to dunk my baker's twine in my watered down glue and I'm getting it good and coated in the glue. I'm going to take it and just run it gently between my two fingers. 
Well, my camera stopped recording, and for some reason it decided not to tell me that it had stopped recording. So I got all my string glued, and then I realized that I didn't really record any of it. So um, I just I, all I did was just tuck it under the edge of my first mitten, and then I kind of um, just wove it around to where I wanted it to be, kind of looping, making little loops. Um, wherever I thought it looked good and then just tucked it behind um, my second mitten and if you find that it's not sticking um, you can kind of take your watered down glue um, that we dipped the string in and just take a cheap watercolor you know uh, dollar store paintbrush and you just kind of brush it on where you think it needs a little bit of extra glue and then Just want to put the ends of my ribbon into my glue. And I'm just going to put some glue onto the back of my circle. And stick that down over the end of my ribbon so that everything looks nice and finished and we don't see the frayed ends of the ribbon here and you don't have um, messy unfinished edges. So again here's the front all finished with the hook all ready to be hung on the Christmas tree or on the wall or um, you could hang this on a doorknob, it would be really cute. Um, wherever you want to um, hang up your frame. So there is my completed project and thank you so much for joining me and I hope you will come back tomorrow for another day in my 12 Days of Christmas Ornament series. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.